Hello YouTube, my name is Parker, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, as you can see, I have a friend today. Uh, this is my grandfather's cat, and I take care of her when he's away. So I've been taking care of her for a little while now. I've got cats around the house, and we have to keep her separated from the others so that they don't fight. But anyway, uh, let me adjust that real quick. Uh, last time, we... Oh, we, uh had them read our poems and we she liked it the best and then nothing scary has happened yet and so I we're gonna go back in oh yeah we only had two of them read our poems and so we're gonna have uh, Sayori and Yuri do it next and I'm gonna do I'm gonna do Yuri last what I said last episode got the cat Okay, <clears throat> what was her voice? Oh, I like this one, Parker. It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm glad. Hold on, I know. She like she she seems to like to sit up here for some reason. And I don't know. It's like I'll hold her like this, and then she'll just kind of climb up there on her own. Are you thinking about coming down? I can't. Oh well, she'll she'll come down if she wants down. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Sorry if I have to keep if you hear me moving that, but I'm trying to not disturb her too much. Mm, let me think. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I like them both. <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. She's purring back there. How are you doing? Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah. Me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Aw, you don't... You want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. I, sorry if I keep looking at her. I can't tell if she's wanting down or not. Do you want down or are you just happy up there? You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, anyway, let's see. Hmm? Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh? It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Parker. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Oh boy, um, bottles. I pop off. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me a lot, lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. Sorry, she's... No, hold on. Let me, let me put you on my lap. That'll be easier if you're on my lap. Is that okay? 
Can I put you on my lap? Come on. Let's put you on my lap. Okay? There we go. Right down here. Oh, there we go. Alright. I blow dust off, dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up, and in come my friends. In they come, in such a hurry, do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after another, holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. No, no, not up there. Holy crap! That's my line. Oh, it is my line. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Nope, not up there right now. We're recording. Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Did you say creepy? Because we've been playing this for like, this is the episode four, I think. So things should get creepy soon, hopefully. Creepy. Oh, okay, now she's on the, now you're in front of the monitor and I can't, sorry, I can't read like that. I'm sorry. I know. Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Hold on, I got. I'm sorry. I have to put you down. There you go. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Hold on, I think she wants out now. There you go. Ah, thanks. I feel like. I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Sorry, if, I don't know if you can hear me move this or not. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Don't, don't mention death. <laughs> don't get ahead of yourself. Yeah, please, please don't. Not in a horror game. Sayuri has always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no, ma no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. I got cat hair on my face. Alright, so we'll do Yuri last. Because she's probably going to like it the most. Uh, let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Ooh. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Parker, this one might even be better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try and give it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Uh... Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah. I do. If it's with you. The raccoon. I knew a raccoon once. 
He sold me a house. Shady loan shark sold me a house and made me pay off the debt by pulling weeds. His name was Tom. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an, ordin as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious fell aware, well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon is, that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. Why are we talking about knives? And urges regarding knives and curiosity regarding knives. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon is taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of... A rush of blood. Um, classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feel myself again. And I feed myself again. That was a little creepy. I'm not sure. I think there might be some messages in that. I think that knife might be not so metaphorical. I was a little more daring with the, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphor No, I don't think it was so metaphorical. <laughs> I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. I have cat hair on my nose. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. I'm trusting you less and less, suddenly. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. Do they involve knives? It's those sorts of things that I'm, uh, that I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Hmm? Didn't Natsuki also write about something like uh, write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Is that interest murder? Eh? She she did. Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She she's right. Well, I mean, if you're murdering people that that's kind of the, the very definition of murder. Ah, uh, I mean... Does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's... well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Ah, uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry. You have no... I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening... There really aren't many people like you, Parker. That's exaggerating a little bit. I just suffer from pr protagonist syndrome. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's... it's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. 
For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Oh no, what was her voice? <laughs> Episode 4, I can remember it. Um, okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room... Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with the last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has- oh, Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets that we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. But doesn't that- but that doesn't tell us where- what we're actually going to be doing for the event. I can't read today. Ah, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Per um, um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's- oh, Sayori's putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Ah, uh, crap, what was her voice? I just did it a minute ago. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't- you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I... I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori, I can't- I'm getting their voices, like, mushed together at this point. I understand where they're coming from. Nope, that was- dang it. Okay. Alright, alright, her voice. What was her voice? It was- it was like, um... Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right, and it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feeling that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it all takes, and all, if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. <laughs> Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayuri looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Eh. It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh... Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. Uh, I, I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. See, I keep getting these two voices like confused or given the same voice almost this club is serious okay this club is seriously going to be the death of me is that foreshadowing 
Is that foreshadowing something? Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No way. Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of the stra in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. C can I go next? Oh wait, no, that's the wrong person. Crap. Uh, can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title, the title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica re begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. Oh, wait. Yeah, I think that's close to the voice I gave her, I guess. More than that, her inflection is pristine. That, I almost guarantee you, is not the case. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around at me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the, the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Oh, wait. Oh. I... I'll go next. Wah! Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. No, wait. Crap. Uh, I don't know. I give up. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and she stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. Oh, wait. No. Excuse me. You can do it, Yuri. It, it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. Excuse me. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside of her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into the reality and glances around her as if bewildered even if she uh, bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't applaud, want to applaud for her, but we were caught off so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. It looks like Yuri is down for the count. Uh, okay. Um, okay. I guess I'm next, then. Sayuri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called my... This one's called my meadow. Ah. Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayuri. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I actually took, um, like a speech class when I was really young. I was probably like nine or ten. I took a class and I had to write, it wasn't a poem, it was like a, just like a report or something. And I had to, you know, sp speak it out loud. I think I did pretty well. I never had a lot of trouble speaking in front of like, I guess I've never really spoken in front of like a large crowd. It's always been just like a small room of people. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sayuri begins her poem. 
Somehow, it feels like her soft voice has, was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori's it is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> Even Parker liked it. I guess that's a good sign. I seem to like everybody's at this point, though. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen... In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hm. Don't make me go before Parker. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Parker lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki. Oh, I wonder if that would be different if I wrote the poems differently between days. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for yesterday. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki be begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem... The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting her, the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's a little... Uh, unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Oh, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, I'm doing it in front of other people. Doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so. Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. I just realized I'm doing the wrong voice for her. Or at least, if, I don't know if they sound different, or if it's just how like it feels in my throat when I'm saying that. I don't know. Geez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow. And then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I wonder if that's when things are going to start happening, maybe. Interesting. 
I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, <laughs> then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Parker, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have happened, have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home... Uh-oh. Uh-huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well... Dang, we're already on page two of our save files. <laughs> I have more gonna have more save files in this game than I did in the hundred hours I played Persona 5 for. Um Ooh. Decisions. I don't know what to say. Ooh. So Do I want to go, like, I've, I've been appealing to Yuri, and that's obviously why she's popping up. Do I want to keep up with that? Because I'm betting that this game has multiple endings. Do I want to keep up with that, or do I want to spread out the my choices? Hmm. I think... Ooh, I don't know. This is an interesting question. I feel like it'd be kind of a jerk thing to say this to her. I d well, no. I don't know, would it? It wouldn't really. Hmm. I'll say this. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh, but she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Parker. You think about me too much sometimes. I've got cat hair in my mouth now. It's the middle of summer and it's hot, and so all the cats in the house are shedding. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. Yeah, never. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy, too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? So we're doing it again. Okay. Well. You know what? I'm going to leave this episode here. Uh, in the next episode, we will come back to this and we will write ourselves the next poem. If you liked it, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel to see more of this. Hopefully in the next episode or two, it will get uh, more creepy and eerie, maybe. I don't know exactly when that's going to be. But uh, I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye.